Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello everybody and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick. And today, I'm flying solo. We're going to talk about a couple of topics that have crossed my radar in the last me week and a half that uh, I feel need discussion. Um, but first, let's go ahead and get into the cigar. And the uh, cigar that I am smoking today, um, I did not look up prior to the show, so I should have. And now I have information about it. Um, it is, assuming that it actually, like, were to, there we go, load up. Um, that would be nice. Um, I'm smoking the 2023 Las Calaveras from Crown Heads. It, uh, is, it features a dark and toothy Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a hearty blend of vintage Nicaraguan long filler tobaccos from head to foot in a trio of classic, it comes in a trio of classic sizes. Um... This little write-up says that it has sweet and peppery notes of cocoa, leather, earth, and uh, a medium to full-bodied finish. Um, so that's that's kind of what we are looking at here. This is the what size. Is this one here? This is the six by fifty-two. Um, so I've got that going on, and we're gonna go ahead and get this guy going. Um, and so. The official cutting is brought to you by... Sorry, I'm, I'm just all over the freaking place here. Uh, the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder at Riverman Cigar Company, which is where I bought the Las Calaveras 2023. So if you guys want to try the Las Calaveras 2023 as well, you can go and you can either swing by Riverman Cigar Company or you can give Dan the Man Ponder or Miss Cindy or somebody over there at Riverman Cigar Company a call. They do mail order. Um, they also just got in the Aladino um, PCA uh, exclusive cigar. Uh, it's got a nice kinet- uh, uh, Cameroon wrapper to it. And it's, it's by all def- uh, description, a very elegant and wonderful cigar. So, you know, you can get yourself the Las Calaveras. You can get yourself the Aladino. All these limited edition release cigars coming to Riverman Cigar Company right now. So if you don't have a brick and mortar near you, let Dan the Man Ponder be your brick and mortar. Give him a call, swing on by, and uh, patronize Riverman Cigar Company because we like them. Anyway, now it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. Now, first things first, this does feature a gold footband promoting ground heads. So I'm going to take the footband off so I don't light it on fire. And then we're going to give this a straight cut here. So um, there we go. Give it a little tap there. Clear out the schmuckus in the end. That's my little tip that I learned from Greg from uh, Fuerte Libre. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, I've, I've continued to do that, Greg. So that was a good tip. Good, good piece of advice. Um, going to give this a cold draw here. And the bitter, um, not bitter, but the, the baker's chocolate, the n- not sweet, but baker's chocolate uh, flavor comes through very strong on the, uh, on the cold draw of the Las Calaveras 2023. It is not a sweet, sweet cold draw by any means. It is definitely a, uh, a baker's chocolate cold draw there, so... Now that we've got that going here, what is up with my flame? My flame on my ladder is too low. I've got to turn that up slightly. There we go. Oh, I can actually light the damn cigar. It's like it wasn't even freaking lighting. There we go. Ah, fire. <laughs> oh, folks. It has been a busy, busy week here in Pulpit Land. And... I unfortunately, because it was so busy, was unable to 
make sure I got a uh, co-host lined up for me for today. So you have me flying solo, but that's okay because, like I said, there's, there's a couple of topics that I wanted to touch on uh, that, have, that have crossed my radar this in the last week and a half or so, and uh, I feel it's important to uh, to to do so. Um, but uh, I don't I don't really know who I want to drag in on this conversation. So, I mean, Trey Mack may have probably been appropriate, but he's been a busy dude ever since PCA uh, coming back. And, I mean, he's all over the fucking place with events and this and that and whatever. It's hard for me to get in touch with him. So, um, Trey Mack, you know, if you're listening, um, you probably have some thoughts on today's topic. And if you do, we can follow up on today's topic uh, another day. But for now, first things first, we're going to... We're going to give initial thoughts on the Los Calaveras here. I'm going to take a drag. Hmm. Relatively smooth retro hail off the beginning. Just a slight little possible back of the nose kind of like little hint of something. Um, I'd say the retro hail has some earthiness to it. The smoking experience definitely has. There's a little something going on, but but by but so far super clean draw, uh, super you know nice easy draw I should say, and um, you know it's it's smoking well. So we'll 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 get deeper into the Lost Calaveras as we go. So for now, let's talk about aliens. So guys, um, at the end of July, uh, a uh, a congressional hearing was held regarding um, UAPs, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, which is basically what they're calling UFOs now. They're not calling them necessarily Unidentified Flying Objects. They're going with the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. And so they had this uh, House hearing, um, and there was a former military intelligence officer, now turned whistleblower, by the name of David, I'm gonna pr- I'm gonna say what I think his last name is, but if I'm mispronouncing it, David, I apologize. David Grush. He served 14 years as an intelligence officer in the Air Force and National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. He appeared before the House Oversight Committee's National Security Subcommittee, along with two former fighter pilots who had firsthand experience with UAPs. All right, so. Flashback, I mean, last year, year or so back, um, those videos of the of the uh, uh, unidentified, you know, flying objects came out, and they were footage from like F-16s, and so this is like legit, like from the government footage of unidentified flying craft, and so that was kind of crazy. Well, now David Grush comes out, and he apparently served as a representative on two Pentagon task forces that investigated UAPs until earlier this year. He said that he was informed of what he described as, quote, a multi-decade UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program, end quote, um, during the course of his work identif- or examining the classified programs. He was apparently denied access to these programs when he requested it, and accused the military of misappropriating funds to shield those operations from congressional oversight. He later said that he had interviewed officials who had direct knowledge of aircraft with what he described as non that the aircraft were non-human in origin and that they had so-called bio, biologics recovered from the craft. He's saying that we've recovered alien bodies. Which... Come on. If we've recovered alien crafts, we've probably recovered alien bodies. Uh, Members of both parties questioned how Congress should go about investigating the remarkable allegations. A reflection of the increasing willingness by lawmakers to demand the executive branch be more forthcoming about the phenomena. Um, We have uh, uh, a Republican from Tennessee saying that they're wanting to uncover the uh, cover-up here. Blah, blah, blah. Um... Lots of video recordings. Um, The Pentagon's all-domain anomaly resolution office, which Congress established to investigate the incidents, has investigated roughly 800 reports of UAPs as of May. 
And while military records have said, or officials have said that most cases have innocuous origins, many others remain unexplained. Lawmakers say that the military know more about the objects than it has uh, disclosed to Congress. Um, do, 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 do. In addition to Grush, the panel also heard testimony from Ryan Graves. He's a former Navy pilot who has spoken out about encountering UAPs on training missions. And David Fravor, who spotted a large object uh, captured in the now infamous Tic Tac video during the flight off the coast of California in 2004. All three witnesses said that current reporting systems are inadequate to investigate UAP encounters and said a stigma still exists for pilots and officials who press for more transparency about their experiences. Um, and then it just kind of goes on from there. But the bottom line is you have um, military officers, you have fighter pilots, you have a former intelligence um, officer who is now coming out saying that we've recovered biologics and you know you have congress pushing for answers and the thing is why is anybody surprised by this why is anybody surprised that this is going on i mean the military the mi if, if you know let's be real here first of all i'm going to turn off my fan i think i'm going to turn off my there we go um let's be real you know if anybody thinks that there are no aliens, I mean, simple math would have to dictate that there is. I mean, when you look at the, when you look up and you you figure out how many planets, how many galaxies, how many stars are in the in the in the universe, um, I think it would be incredibly vain to assume that our little blue dot is the only uh, planet in the entire cosmos that that developed up intelligent life. Um, additionally. I think it's incredibly vain to believe that we were the first intelligent life in the universe or that we started at the same time as other intelligent life, which means there could be humanoid or even non-humanoid uh, type species out there that maybe they developed up, I don't know, a billion years before we did. What kind of technology could we have if we were, as a, as a society, as a, a species, a billion years older than what we are right now? You know, maybe we would be flying to other planets and, uh, you know, checking out their their uh, cultures and leaving crop circles and, and turning their cows inside out and things of that nature. You know, maybe maybe that would be something that we would be doing if we had developed up a billion years before that civilization. And so you got to ask yourself, is it that far fetched to think that there's another race out there in the in the cosmos another another species in the cosmos that has developed up uh, the technology to be able to perform interspace travel. I don't know. I mean, I think it's I think it's vain to think that that's not the case. But at the same time, like, do I know the answer? No, I don't know the answer. But if that is the case, I've been talking too long and my cigar's already gone out. If that is the case, and the government does know about it, then you got to ask yourself, why don't they want us knowing? And I think the answer is a couple fold there. First, I think there's this common thought that if we as a society are told tomorrow there are aliens and here is the proof, I think that they think that we as a society would go crazy, that there'd be rioting and looting in the streets and we would just kind of go, go, I think we would... You know, I think they think that we would lose our minds if we had confirmation that we are not alone in the universe. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I think maybe in the 1940s and 50s back then, you know, maybe it might have been. But I think through Hollywood, they have kind of gotten us prepared for that eventuality. I think they've gotten us prepared for the thought that we are not alone. And I think that probably most people these days, especially after all of us living through, in some cases suffering through uh, 2020 through 2023, we'd be like, well, fuck. Of course there's aliens. It's Friday. We have to have aliens now today. Tomorrow, it'll be killer sharks with lasers off the top of their head. But today it's aliens, you know? Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I don't know if we would, as a collective society, go crazy knowing that there's aliens out there. Obviously, there's going to be some. You know, some people are going to have issues with the thought that maybe life did not originate on Earth in such the way that they've always thought. You know, meaning that we're not... I, I guess what... It, we're not special. I mean, we're special. We're all special. Um, you know, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about that a lot. How, like, when you talk about the math of and, and the science of how what it took for you to be here and be alive, it's it's incredibly special, and it actually is a miracle that that all of us have our lives, um, because mathematically, there's so many people that don't have the chance. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. But that. I don't mean to say that we're not special. I guess what I meant more to say is that we're not alone. We're not isolated. We're not, you know, insular. That there's others out there. and We're part of a, a larger community than we thought. And, you know, if you are a Star Trek person, then you kind of, uh, you know, that in the, at least that story and that, in that, you know, um, show... Once we realize that we're not alone in the universe, it kind of helps to bring about a lot of the end of the problems in the human race, at least, in that we uh, kind of start to look past our, our individual differences and start to look for, you know, um, a, a forward as, as, a, as a species and not so much as individual races and countries and things of that nature. If that ends up happening, if, if we discover that there's aliens out there... Um, that would be fantastic, and I don't know why we're hiding it. On the flip side, I don't, I don't know if that happens with the current people in charge that are in charge because change needs to happen as a result of the right people being in the right positions. And the problem is I think that leaders of all countries tend to think about at least their own country in some cases themselves before their country and i just don't know if we have the forward thinking people in the right place right now to lead us into a better future where we as a species can uh can uh come together in light of the fact that we now know that we're not alone in the universe um so there's that uh obviously the other reason that the uh government and the military would want to keep it secret that we that they know that there's aliens is because they're trying to like reverse engineer all their technology so they can get an upper hand against whatever enemy back in the 50s and 60s it would have been the russians and you know then from there and whatever lord only knows who it is today hell it may be you know the american people uh, versus the government i mean i'm not advocating i'm not saying but i'm just saying you don't know what they're thinking and so um that's uh, that's an interesting, you know, that that's a problem in and of itself is that you have the the Congress of the United States is essentially investigating the military of the United States to determine if they knew that there are aliens or not. I mean, it's weird. It's really, it's really weird, and it's unfortunate. Um, but. Anyway, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it was interesting that this is the first time that, at least it's the first time I know of, I'm sure there's probably some some UFO experts out there that are listening to this and going like, this dumb son of a bitch, he has no idea what we know and blah, blah, blah. But I would hope that maybe that there's some, um, there isn't, have. I would hope that this isn't, that there hasn't been a long line of people with credibility coming forth before Congress saying, yes, they have aliens. And this is the only the first time that we're hearing about it. I mean, I would think that this is probably a pretty big deal. Um, it's a big deal to me. I mean, I don't know. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so anyway, to wrap that up with a nice little bow, if you haven't heard of David Gersh, and that's, uh, just to spell his last name so that, uh, you know, you all um, know it. It's uh, 
G U R S C H, David Gersh. Um, if you want to Google him and find out more about what he said, uh, be my guest. I would be interested in hearing some of your thoughts. You can call in the Ask the Boys hotline, area code 863-874-0000. Do you think that we're ready to, to you know, as a species, know that we are not alone in the universe? Do you think that we're ready to um, encounter other beings of other planets? I don't know. Um. But along those lines, I think we have some planet problems on this own planet. You know, we've talked on the show about the um, uh, Mandela effect before. And I'm starting to see more and more people talking about that and bringing it up. You know, and it's the obvious ones they bring up. The whole, oh, Ed McMahon didn't really work for the Publishers Clearinghouse. And yet we all remember Ed McMahon working for and delivering checks for the Publishers Clearinghouse. And then there's the one about, you know, Richard Simmons never wore a sweatband on a, a headband. And, and everybody thinks he did, but apparently he never wore a headband. And, you know, just it's little silly things like that. Um, but uh, the greater thing that's being discussed or that I've heard, had crossed my radar this week, I had somebody bring this up to me. They asked me if I've heard about, you know, how we're going to transition to new Earth. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it's this dimensional, this theory that we're shifting dimensions and we're shifting dimensional planes. And that's what's causing this Mandela effect is that as we shift dimensional planes, there are little subtle things that change as we shift from one dimensional plane to another. And that's why we all remember Ed McMahon working for the Public Church Clearinghouse. But in this new dimension that we're in, apparently he did not. And maybe in the old dimension, C-3PO was 100% gold. But in this new dimension, his leg is silver. And, uh, you know, that's why. And maybe the actor has already shifted with the new with the new dimensional frequencies. And that's why, you know, he uh, states that, uh, no, the suit always had a silver leg and blah, blah, blah. And yet we all remember that C-3PO was gold. Anyway, it's weird shit like that. It's, again, minor. It's little. But it's a bigger issue. And so I was talking to this individual, and I'm like, what are you talking about with this new Earth? And they said, uh, we are shifting towards a different dimensional plane. And that when we get there, it's all going to be based upon or your your ability to move from old Earth to new Earth. Um, it's all going to be based upon your personal harmonics and frequencies which apparently is based upon your mood so if you're a happy loving caring individual i guess you'll be welcomed in on to new earth and you'll make the shift but apparently if you have all this like malice and rage and hate and 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 turmoil in your in your heart that your your frequencies will be off to where you won't be able to make the switch you'll be on old earth and i and i wasn't really able to clarify with this individual if like the new earth and the old earth people interact because i think that's what's happening you know based upon what i've talked about before that the that um or talked with others before about is that right now as we're making supposedly making this shift um that's what's going on that's why you know you have the C-3PO actor who, you know, rem remembers the silver leg, he can talk to and interact with, like, let's say me, who I remember him being, C-3PO being fully gold. He's already made a shift. I have not made a shift. You know, that sort of thing. But anyway, apparently it all has to do with your mood. So, um, I, you know, look, do I believe all of that? I don't know. I mean, I think it's I think it's ridiculous. I, I I don't think it's ridiculous, but I do think it's it's very far fetched. And um but what I will say is this is you know, if it if it's a good reason for all of us to um decide to be better to one another, nicer, kinder, gentler with one another so that maybe we're because we're concerned about making the shift to new earth then fine let's all be nicer kinder gentler to one another so that we can make the shift to new earth and uh at least that'll make the current earth that we've got a better place 
instead of everybody being such assholes to one another. Um, so that's my, my PSA there. Carl. Anyway. As for the Lost Calaveras 2023, um, I've been slowly smoking this as I've been yakking here. And um, it's uh, it's drawing really well. Burn line is staying really, really nice. Um, I had to touch it up just a little bit because I was talking too much. The flavor on it, truthfully, I'm not getting a ton of, like, distinct flavor note off of the smoking experience so far. Um, you know, I'll admit, last year's Las Calaveras, I don't, I don't know, I don't like shitting on things, and I, and I don't think I'm shitting on it necessarily, but, um... Last year's Las Calaveras just didn't do it for me. The one with the light blue band, it just didn't do it for me. It was too light of a smoke for my smoking preference and my profile. Um, you know, I know a few people that did like it, so bully for them. Um, but by and large, it was just a little too too light and mild for my taste. Um, so far... I've heard good things about this one. I, obviously, nobody has said that it's... Uh, the thing that I do keep hearing is that it's good. It's not as good as the original Las Calaveras, which I think has been everybody saying that with every release since the original. Um, but I, this one's not blowing my, my skirt up that much either here, at least in the very beginning. Again, I'm in the first third. Maybe it ramps up. We're going to keep going to see. I don't want to shit on it too bad, um, you know, right off the beginning. But it is just a little light for my taste. Um, anyway, so what do we have coming up? Why don't we go ahead now and get into the Villiger Entertainment segment. And the Villiger Entertainment Report is brought to you by Villiger Cigars. And uh, Villiger Cigars, guys... They're, they're doing great work. Um, I actually uh, was just flipping through the... Whoa! Let me set that down here. The newest edition of Cigar Aficionado with Guy Fieri. Um, and uh, I happened to notice that the Villiger... Hang on, let me find it here. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. The Villiger... Uh, Cuular Black Forest. So that's their Maduro cigar. Um, that was uh, rated by Cigar Aficionado. They uh, review the Torpedo and they say that it's a predominantly earthy in character. This dark, streaky Torpedo uh, shows some traces of black pepper, chocolate, and herbs before the woody finish. Draw and burn and even. They gave it an 87. Um, which let's be real guys. 87 is a freaking solid score for a cigar. So, you know, but that's just uh one cigar, you know, um, Nick Gervais, he smoked the Villiger 1888 Nicaragua the other day and he was raving about it to me. He smoked it down to the absolute bare minimum nub. So, you know, Villiger cigar, they're good cigars. You're going to want to give them a shot, give them a try. You can reach out to Villiger through their website, find the store locator, which then allows you to find a store near you that carries Villiger cigars. And uh, if you do, give them a try. You're going to like them, especially if you live near a TAA store that has those T Villiger TAA cigars, because this year's TAA cigar is lights out amazing. So you're going to want to give that a shot. Um, so lately, with Vill uh, in the Villiger Entertainment Report, what I have been uh, entertainment-wise consuming is um, I have been watching the hell out of Futurama. I noticed that Hulu... Hulu has brought back Futurama. Um, they've got a new season that has started. Um, but I haven't been watching the new ones because when I went to go to watch the new ones, that's when I discovered that um, there were like four or five seasons that I still hadn't seen from back when it made the switch from Fox to Comedy Central. And so because I didn't have 
or because I hadn't watched those, I'm like, well, shit, man, I got to catch up on that. So I have been catching up on Futurama, and I love that show so much. I, I there, are, as much as I absolutely love the Simpsons, specifically Simpsons seasons three through like nine. Um, I think that's the pinnacle of the Simpsons, like awesomeness. Um, I'll say Futurama is one of those shows that just like almost from the beginning, they were nailing some really good jokes and it just gets so better as it goes on. And then it gets so smart too, because there's so much science and math in the background. Uh, on the blackboards and various things in, in, in the show. And the thing is, I've read articles where they talk about how uh, the writing staff all have, like, all this advanced, you know, degrees and everything else to where, you know, that math, that science, that's all, like, legit. That's that's not just, like, background gibberish. That's, that's like, legit math and stuff that they've got on the boards that that actually makes sense and is relevant. So it's kind of fun when you stop and think about all the little minor details that are thrown in this sh this show, which is just ludicrous, but I it's fantastic. I love it. Um, so, yeah, I have been... I've been watching Futurama. Um, I also um, have been playing catch-up on podcasts because... Um, that I had that week, um, a couple weeks back, where I had my son for the whole week. And uh, during that week, man, I let all my podcasts just kind of go. And I've been playing catch-up on all of those. And the one that I want to highlight, um, I do want to give a shout-out to the guys over at Smoking Butts and Tappan Ash. Um, they have been uh, doing really well with their show. Um, so one of their guys, uh, Scott... Um, who has been on, you know, the show when when I did the episode with the Smoking Butts and Tap and Ash guys, Scott was was there and on this show with us. Um, you know, Scott uh he's unfortunately had some medical stuff pop up and uh, you know, I hate using the thoughts and prayers uh phrase cuz it's so cliché. Um, but uh in all seriousness, thoughts and prayers are with Scott and um he's had some health stuff pop up that has taken him um, away from the show periodically. And so Travis and, and Dave have been kind of, you know, they everyone they, they have Scott for an episode, then they don't. And then they have Scott for an episode, and then they don't. And so they've been making do. And I, it's been funny as hell. And they, uh, they brought up, they have a segment, Would You Rather, where typically uh, Travis throws out a couple of really just horrible options. Um, and you got to pick which one you want to do. And, uh, they had one the other day that really, really was horrible. Um, it was truly, truly hor three horrible options. And, um, I'm not going to answer, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that now. Cause, uh, I want you to go and listen. That would be, what episode was that? Um, if you want to hear one of the worst, you know, um, would you rather options, um, then you need to go and listen to their uh, July 19th episode, Two Beefed Up Guys in a Fresh Box. Um, uh, they, uh, they have one hell of a would you rather segment on there. And um, uh, just this is my little shout out to those guys. The answer to that. The answer to that is with proper prep time and lubrication, it's the first option. Um, all of them are horrible. Scott copped out on it when he came on the following episode after that one. He wasn't on that one, and so uh, he answered the next episode. But I think Scott's answer was a cop out. You know, he brought an element into it that was not initially discussed. And so I think it was bad, but no, the, but Travis, Dave, the answer is the first one and you just gotta, the only thing I would request is like a, uh, like a piece of wood to bite down on or something like that. It just, it, ah, oh God, anyway. Um, so yeah, guys, if you're into, into fun podcasts, um, in a similar vein to this one, go check out the Smoking Butts and Tap and Ash podcast and, uh, 
give them a listen. And you learn some cool stuff about barbecue. Um, you know, you get good uh, reviews of rubs and sauces and things of that nature over there. So, you know, it's 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 worth your time if you're into into cooking. So, anyway. Um, otherwise, I think that's probably been about it in terms of, like, entertainment that I've consumed lately. Um, it's, it's, it's just been a busy, busy damn week. Um, I'll be honest. Um, I'll give you guys a little insight, personal insight into the world. Um, so I have spent the last week trying to, well, more like week and a half, trying to scramble to get people to pay me money they owe me. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of my advertisers at my newspapers have been, uh, um, behind on, uh, payment. So cash flow has been ridiculously tight and, um, it's caused a lot of other stress. And so what that has resulted in is it's resulted in, um, a lot of things kind of going by the wayside until, I can get that situation resolved because, you know, if uh, if I can't pay my rent, then obviously um, worrying about God knows what is uh, is secondary. So um, anyway, that's kind of where things have been. Um, on the plus side, I've managed to scrape together, um, you know, what I needed. Uh, it's it's week to week at this point. Um, August is shaping up to be a much better month for advertising on paper. I just need those people to pay me in a timely manner. So theoretically, September will be a glorious month. Um, But August just needs to um, come together with the money that I'm owed from June and July. And then from there, you know, things will be better. I mean, owning a small business, guys. You know, some people really think it's glorious. You know, they're like, oh, my God, it'd be so fun to have my own business and do this and be my own boss and whatever. And don't get me wrong. I like being my own boss. I enjoy being my own boss. I love making my own schedule. I love the ability to sleep in until 9 if I'd like to and be up late if I want to and uh, the ability to make my own rules and be uh, the ability where... You know, if I'm going and doing something, I can wear whatever I want. I don't have a dress code. Um, you know, it's it's nice. The, there are pro, there are some things though that you have to take into account. Specifically, there has to be, you know, a really strong sense of self, um, strong sense of self. Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, where, where, where encouragement, I guess maybe would be one where, where you have to really encourage yourself to get stuff done. You know, you got to really be on top of your shit, and you know you can't can't be lazy because if you're lazy, nobody's gonna do it if you don't do it. Um, if you're behind on something, or if you don't address something, then um, nobody's going to do it but you. So you have to do it, and unfortunately, that does result in uh, possible sometimes things slowing down a little bit. And also, um, it, it it it's just one of those aspects that's not as fun. Um, the other thing that's not as fun is um, you know, there's. It's easy when you get a paycheck from an employer and all your taxes are taken out. Then at the end of the year, you do your taxes for the government and, oh my gosh, I'm getting back this fat refund and blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, everybody took everything out. You didn't have to worry about it. You never even saw that money. And then the money comes. Well, you know, for small business owners like me, we don't have anybody taking money out of our taxes or our checks. We have to account for our taxes as we go. And... um that can be difficult as well. Um, it's one of those things where sometimes, you know, every dime of every dollar is being spoken for and committed to. 
and you're sitting back and you're looking at it and going, how in the hell am I going to make this work? You know, what am I going to eat on? What am I going to have for gas money? What am I going to, I mean, it's not easy sometimes. And, um, it, it's, it, and it's all at the whims of various things. I mean, like, don't get me started on fucking marketing firms. I've got one marketing firm right now that they flat out say the ads you run in July will be processed and paid for in September. So they flat out freaking tell you that they're going to take 60 days to get around to paying you for the work that you've done. And I kind of find that to be horseshit, you know, because like I don't have the ability to tell my printer, hey, print my paper and I will pay you for that printing in 60 days. I don't have that ability. Um but, you know, that's where the marketing firms kind of have me over a barrel because they know that I want that advertising. They know that ultimately I want those ad dollars, and so I'm going to do what I'm going to do in order to do that. But, yeah, it's a giant pain in the ass, and I hate it. And quite frankly, if I didn't have to deal with marketing firms ever again, I would be a happy, happy man. But unfortunately... Um, for some of my bigger advertisers, I do have to deal with marketing firms and it's, uh, it's not a pleasant experience. Um, but what are you going to do? So anyway, that, I don't know where I was going with all that. I think I was just kind of telling you guys a little insight as to what's going on. Um, I, uh, had a good run of shows going there for a while, but I need to, I need to take a minute I'll probably do that tomorrow. Take a minute to sit down and fire off a whole bunch of invites to people to come on and get a nice uh, get a nice calendar going of of shows because um, I need to need to plan. It's just one of those things. I just need to schedule it out. I got to plan it out. Um, anyway, so that's that. Um, as for the Lost Calaveras twenty twenty three. I am still, it's a slow smoker. I'm still in the first third here. Not quite to the edge of the first and second third, but I'm nearing it. Um, the smoke production on it's fantastic. The draw on it's really good. The burn line on it is really good. Smoking flavor to it. I mean, I guess I'll say lightly leathery with maybe a little earthy tone to it. Um, the leathery, I think, definitely comes from that that broadleaf wrapper that they're saying uh, is on it. And then, uh, you know, the earthy tone, I think, would be coming from more of a, the filler on the inside. Let's do another retro hail here. Just so I, I can... Uh... Uh, um, not really too much spice. It's more earthy. It really is just an earth, it, kind of an earthy retrohale. That was I cough mostly because I just didn't quite get enough out before I did that. Um, anyway, um, it's good. It's not. I still. I'm trying to remember. I think it was 2021, the uh, yellow banded one. I liked that one because the spice level on that one was very high. And so it was one of those cigars that when you smoked it, you had enough pepper and spice to it that it really kind of slit your throat um, almost from the start. And then it would kind of wind down and then it would ramp back up again um, if, I, if I'm remembering it right. And this one, it might be slowly amping up to something, but so far... It's still lighter than that 2021. Definitely stronger than the 2022, which that's good because the 2022, in my opinion, was too weak. It was just not there. Mm. But but it's not a bad cigar. I don't know how many of these I'm going to necessarily smoke. I don't know if I'm going to, like, go out of my way to buy a box. Of, I mean, definitely not. Um... I will say the uh, the the price point on it's a smidge high too. Um, 
I think I paid about 16 bucks for this Toro. Um, truthfully, I feel like at a price point like that, I would have expected a little bit more complex flavor, a little bit more defined flavor um, to it. I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm not a fan of the higher price points. And um, I have heard other people talking about it. The fact that more and more cigar companies are going to higher price points for some of their cigars, that is worrisome to me and i hope that it's not a general trend um i uh yeah i i really i it's not something that i'm gonna be able to follow along with too much ironically ironically the other i had two cigars that i was debating between smoking on this episode it was the Los calaveras 2023 and it was the mcauliffe black and the McAuliffe Black, that's a new cigar from McAuliffe. Um, I have my hands on one of them. I want to smoke it um, on the show. Uh, but uh, I also want to, um, I really want to take my time on that one. And so I didn't want to do that necessarily on a solo show like this where I was having to worry about talking and everything like that. Um but that cigar comes in at I think like eight bucks, eight or nine dollars, which, hallelujah, a new cigar coming in at like eight or nine bucks. Um, you know, I've talked to a couple reps. They've told me, hey man, it's just where you live. When you live, if you're on the coast, east or west coast, you know, you got people out here that are saying your cigars are all too cheap. Where are the where are the more expensive cigars that are that are better? You know, and all that. Aren't they? And they're equating these higher prices with um, with uh, better cigars. I don't necessarily believe that a higher price cigar is a better cigar. Um, realistically, um, I think it's just a more expensive cigar. But um, that's the problem is that these cigar companies are are hearing from some folks like you need more you need more higher priced offerings. I've got cu- retailers saying I've got customers that'll pay more you know, for a cigar. So give me something that's, it's a little bit more expensive that I can get more money out of these people, you know, and that sort of thing. And so because you have that, you have these companies coming out with this higher priced stuff and kudos to McAuliffe for, for looking at the economy of the, of the world and the economy of the country and saying, Hey, milk is five bucks a gallon gas, at least in, in Illinois, like at the gas station right over by my house is four bucks a gallon. Um, you know, you can't go to the grocery store and I, I went to the grocery store this morning. I bought two boxes of cereal. I bought a pound of Turkey at the lunch or at the deli counter. Um, I bought some slices of Swiss cheese from the dairy counter in like, it's, it's a freaking craft. It was pre-sliced, you know, craft Swiss cheese, you know, for sandwiches, um, and then I bought, what was the last thing I bought? It was dairy, it was the cheese, it was the meat, the two things of cereal. Oh, and I went to the produce. And in the produce section, they have these paper, they have the bananas, you know, the bunches of bananas. They were all super green. But then also they have these paper bags, they're little lunch bags, and they're filled with bananas that are browned and spotted. So like they're they're the ones that realistically they've got maybe a couple of days left before they're just too overripe, you know, good for banana bread or something like that at that point, or smoothies or something, right? Well, you can get this bag. It's got like 10 or 12 bananas in it for like 99 cents. So guess what I bought? I bought this bag of bananas for 99 cents. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat as many of them as I can before they ripen up. And, or too much, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the freezer, and I'll be able to use them for smoothies. Um, but the bottom line is all that, all that, which isn't much. It's not much at all. Cost me twenty six dollars. I mean, it's it's unreal what we're spending on stuff these days. And so when a cigar comes along. And it's sixteen, seventeen dollars. It better be the best damn cigar that I've ever had for that price point, because otherwise, I can find a much 
much better cigar at a much cheaper price point um, that I already know and that I love, and I can live, be happy with that because I'm sorry. It's just it's it's just the way it is these days. Money's tight, and you can't afford to go and spend it on luxury items. Um, unless you're rich, in which case, go for it. But, you know, whatever. So, um, with that being said, Lost Calaveras 2023, good cigar. Uh, in my opinion, probably overpriced. And it's maybe not quite hitting all the notes that I would want for my own personal palate. But, you know, it's not every cigar is made for me. The 2021, I enjoyed a lot better than this one. So, you know, hey, 2021 was my year. But anyway, um, that's my thoughts on that. So why don't we now go ahead and hear from my monthly cigars. This would normally be the time that I give some information about my monthly cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. Thanks. And see, and, and that's another point. You know, we're talking about cigars that are not necessarily for everyone's palate. Um, you know, figuring out what is and what isn't something that you're into. You know, that's the beauty of the My Monthly Cigars box is you get four cigars in the mail and you can try them and you can say, hey, you know what? That cigar was really good. That cigar was okay. That cigar didn't really knock my socks off, but that cigar was good. And so you kind of get to figure out at a at a discounted price, you know, what uh, what cigars kind of make you feel happy and what cigars maybe are just a cigar. So um, for the uh, uh, people that are still experimenting around trying to figure out what's what and or, you know, want to try some different stuff, give my monthly cigars a try. And don't forget to look into the fucking good coffee while you're over there. That's F-A-H King Good Coffee. And, uh, you know, give that a shot, too. You can get the Daily Press. That's the pulpit blend. And uh, the Lounge Coffee. Everybody talks about the Lounge Blend. So, anyway, head on over to MyMonthlyCigars.com and give that a shot. We are available on the socials at Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. We are also on Facebook where we have the Cigar Pulpit Parishioners Group. It's a fun group of people that uh, share what they're smoking and, and you know, kind of just generally enjoying everything. So um, head on over there and sign up for that. And we're on Twitter or X, whatever you prefer. Um, and uh, we are on YouTube where you can watch this. This isn't necessarily the most stimulating episode because it's just me, but hey, whatever. And then um, we do need your calls and questions for Ask the Boys. Area code 863-874-0000. You know, guys, I don't really have, I think I have one call so far for the month of August. So make sure you get your calls in because, um, you know, I... uh, I can't do that that show without you guys, and it's more fun when I have a whole bunch of calls to go through. So, anyway, give us a call. Area code 863-874-0000. One last thing I wanted to plug and mention is Pulpit Fest is coming up September 22nd and 23rd here in the St. Louis area. Um, you know, it's just a good two days of brotherhood and camaraderie and, and hanging out with... Uh, fellow pulpit listeners and uh, myself we're gonna hang out and have a bunch of cigars we'll we'll find some food we'll uh, there'll be activities i i don't know exactly what i'm sure we'll record an episode at some point throughout that um and it's just gonna be a good time so if you're looking for um a nice little weekend getaway maybe consider st louis in uh late september september 22nd and 23rd come and hang out meet some of your other pulpit listeners it'll be a good time um otherwise guys i don't really have a whole lot else to say um 
I know this is one of those ones where it's just me flying solo, so hopefully this wasn't too bad. And uh, hopefully it wasn't quite as uh, um, sleep-inducing as the last time I did a solo episode. So anyway, um, yep, so hopefully things will be better. So uh, anyway, guys, it's been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. I'll take some time this weekend to make some more drops because I really need to get a drop for the Villager segment and, you know, that sort of thing. And I want to redo the new intro music since uh, the new intro music apparently is in use somewhere else. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. So anyway, guys, have a good weekend. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later.